Hello, welcome to another video. You may have heard that this is the most beautiful mathematical equation. I do not disagree because this is really beautiful because it has every beautiful number you could ever think of in mathematics. Not all of them, but the most beautiful. So this equation is the most beautiful. Imagine if every time you multiplied something by something, one of those was zero. Or if you needed to add to something, all you're adding is zero. Your life is a lot easier. Imagine if you're multiplying by one, your life will be easy. Imagine if every differentiation you did had an E or an integration. Imagine if there was no I, how would you solve those nasty negative square roots? You, know, you would throw them away. What about pi? There would be no circles. Trigonometry would not exist. So, this is a beautiful equation, whether you agree or not. But I'm gonna show you why it is the most beautiful equation. Let's get into it. So we call this Euler's equation because this is Euler's number, okay? But that's not the reason we call it Euler's equation. We call it Euler's equation because Euler was just messing around with Taylor's theorem or equations or series and came up with this. Now, how did he do that? If you've already taken differential equation or calculus too, you know that we have these series that we usually have for certain functions. So I'm gonna write the three of them because I don't wanna spend this video deriving them. So let's write what the Taylor series is for E. I'm gonna write it on this side. So we know that E to the X, if it is centered at zero, the Maclaurin series for it, which I'll, I'll just use the term Taylor series for it right now, will be equal to, which this actually is a polynomial. You can write e to the x as one plus x plus, you see, this is one times x to the zeroth power. This is one times x to the first power, and then you have x to the second power, but each time you divide by the factorial of the power. We did the same thing here, but it's not significant because one factorial is one and zero factorial. So here, we're gonna go here and say this is x cubed over three factorial, plus I'm gonna write x to the fourth over four factorial, plus x to the fifth over five factorial, plus x to the sixth over six factorial, plus x to the seventh over seven factorial, plus you keep going, like that. And every time what you're writing is basically x to the n over n factorial, x to the n over n factorial. That is the polynomial representation of e to the x, which means if I wanted to find e to the, e to the zero, let's say x was zero, I just need to plug in zero for all of the x's, you see that my answer is going to be 1. If I want to find e squared, I just need to change the x to 2. So it's going to be 1 plus 2, which is 3, plus 4 over 2 factorial, that's 4 over 2, which is 2, so that's 3, that's already 5, okay? Plus, there's going to be 8 over 3 factorial is 6, 8 over 6 is 1 point something, so 1 point something plus 5 gives me 6 point something. And I keep adding, and eventually I'm going to get something like 7 point something as the square of e. Okay, so this works, but usually they approximate, and the more terms you, you, you use, the more accurate your answer is gonna be. So, what other function is relevant? A common one that we know also is, um, let's say, cosine x. Well, we know, how do you know how to write cosine x? Let me give you a trick. Cosine x is an even function because cosine x is equal to cosine negative x. So once I remember even function, I go back to this and I say which ones are even. 
this is even, this is even, this is even. Okay, so I'm going to take all the even ones. So since this is even, this is even because it's zero. So it's going to be one. But the first term changes to minus x squared over 2 factorial. I go to the next even one. I write plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial. I go to the next even one. I change the sign minus x to the sixth over 6 factorial. The next is going to be plus. I keep going. But what I'm doing is I'm actually taking only the even terms. So, but I'm alternating the signs. So there must be a minus one that's alternating. Because the first one, when it was zero, it was positive. This is zero, this is one, this is two. Okay, so here it's going to be x to the 2n over 2n factorial. We're going to come back to this because we need it. And then for sine, it's going to be whatever I left out. So I left out x, so I'm going to start with x. Mm. And then I'm going to take all the odd ones. This is x to the first power, so it's going to be minus x cubed over 3 factorial. How did I know this? Well, I already know it because I have used the Taylor formula, um, the, the, the formula for Taylor series to establish this. And as a calculus student, you should have this figured out so you know how to solve your problems, okay? Because nobody's going to always give you this. So here we go. And then I'm going to take this one. Where is it? The odd one plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus x to the seventh over 7 factorial uh, plus I just keep going and what it looks like I'm doing is I'm taking all the odd terms but this is going to be negative 1 raised to n and this is going to be x to the odd number this is how you write odd number over 2n plus 1 factorial. So I want you to imagine Euler sitting at his dining table one day looking at these equations and going, you know what, I don't care about these two. I want to focus on my number, Euler's number. I want to see what if I want to get e to the 1000th, what would I do? I would just plug 1000 in here. Okay, so he changed the number to something else and he said, hey, what about this imaginary numbers? Can we plug in imaginary numbers? What if this X is not real? What if X was an imaginary X? What do you think I would get? So he did this. E to the I X would be, remember, whatever is here, you plug in to replace the X. If we try to do that here, see what happens. This becomes one plus. That is just i x. If you go here, it becomes i x squared divided by 2 factorial plus this becomes i x i x cubed over 3 factorial. We go to the next one. It's i x to the fourth over four factorial. Next one, i x to the fifth. I just want to show you a pattern that we're going to see for five factorial and then plus i x to the sixth over six factorial plus i x to the seventh over seven factorial plus keep going to i x to the nth over n factorial. So why did I have to go through all of these? Well, I want you to look at something that's happening. Remember that I X raised to power any power, let's call it K, is the same thing as I to the K times X to the K. So for example, this will be I squared. I X squared is equal to I squared times x squared. Well, what is i squared? It's negative 1. So it's negative x squared. So i x squared can be written as negative x squared. 
If I do the same thing to this, it's going to be i cubed, i x cubed is i cubed times x cubed. But we know that i cubed is the same thing as i squared times i, which is negative i. So it's negative i x cubed. If I take it to the next one, i to the fourth, it's going to be i squared squared, which is going to be negative 1 squared, which is 1. So this equation, when simplified, see what it's going to become. It's going to become 1 plus ix. This is going to become minus x squared over 2 factorial plus. This becomes, oh, it's going to be a minus. It's going to be minus i x cubed over 3 factorial. If I go here, this is going to be i to the fourth is going to become just 1 because that's i times i times i times i, which is negative 1 times negative 1, which gives us 1. So that gives us plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial. Plus, because i to the fifth, look, i to the fifth x to the fifth is the same thing as i to the fourth times i times x to the fifth. But we know that i to the fourth is 1. So it's just i x to the fifth. So it is plus, actually. So it was right. i x to the fifth over 5 factorial. Mm. When we get to an even number again, this is going to be i to the fourth times i squared, which is 1 times negative 1. So it's going to be negative x to the sixth over 6 factorial plus. Is this going to be plus? Well, let's see. No, this is going to be minus. Minus i x to the seventh over 7 factorial. Well, let's make this clear. i equals i. i squared is negative 1 i to the third is minus i, and i to the fourth is 1. So every time you see a number, just take out all of these and multiply the rest, and you're going to see the rest of this chain, and it looks like we're done. Well, I don't care about what the ending is. What I care about is what we currently have. Now watch what Euler discovered. And that's where the most beautiful equation came out from. Now, some people call this Euler's equation. But this, the part I'm about to show you is really Euler's equation. And then this one is the most beautiful equation. Okay, so watch this. If you look at cosine, it looks like this matches this. So I'm going to put a blue box around everything that matches cosine. Do you see this? Do you see this? Do you see this? We'll keep going like that. You'll notice that e to the ix is equal to all the cosine terms in this sequence right here. Cosine x. And then if you pay attention, let's use a different color. This are the terms in the sine terms, but all of them have i. Look. And then the next one is negative x cubed over 3 factorial, but there's an i. And there is an i. And there is an i. And there is an I, and there is an I, and there is an I. So it looks like we are adding some I and the sign terms. Have you seen this before? It was based on this that we got de Moivre's theorem. If you remember from your pre-calculus days, okay, you've seen that name before.
it was based on this. Because now you can do anything to this and you just have to change this. Okay, so this is what you call Euler's equation. So the next thing you want to ask yourself is what has this got to do with this guy? Well, this is the basis because what Euler did was, okay, what if I know the angle I want to calculate? What if I want to say X is zero? What if X is, well, if X is zero, I can do cosine zero plus one times sine zero, I times sine zero, but this is going to be zero. And cosine zero is one. So e to the i, e to the zero is still one. <clears throat> that's not interesting. What about if I change it to pi? And that's it. Do it. You become the new Euler. So now using Euler's equation that we just generated from Taylor's series from each of these functions, we're going to say that e to the i x is equal to cosine x plus i sine x. If x is equal to pi, then we have e to the i pi is equal to cosine pi plus i times sine pi. But from your basic trig, you know that cosine pi is negative 1 and sine pi is 0. So this gives us negative 1 plus 0, which is negative 1. Well, this doesn't look nice enough, but you know what to do. If we add one to both sides, yeah, we get e to the i pi plus one. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.